Hello and welcome to this episode of Bridging Gaps, the business podcast. As promised, this is the final part of my interview with Richard Dwyer. Richard is a really interesting man. He's got such a a massive experience, both in his career as a stuntman and also in his career as an entrepreneur and business owner, in particular of Flair Gymnastics. So I think you'll really enjoy this last part. It's where we're starting to talk about how Richard, I guess, looks after himself and tries to maintain that all-important balance in our lives to to enable us to, to stay healthy, both mentally and physically. So join me for the final part of Richard Dwyer and I in conversation. Welcome to Bridging Gaps, the business podcast sharing the challenges and stories of fellow business owners. So how do you look after yourself in terms of your well-being? And, Mm. you know, do you find, are you a workaholic or do you make sure that you've got time? I know you said that you run, but just to look after, and and I don't necessarily mean the physical fitness side, but just your your mental well-being, making sure you've got space and and happiness. Yeah, good question. And it's a really important one because uh, particularly now that we're seeing, you know, there's lots of science coming out now with the effects of the the effects of social media on the brain, particularly on young adolescent mm-hmm. brains as well. It's really important if you're a parent that you, you know, you, you read up on this stuff because it's really important. And mental health is, is, is at the forefront now because we're seeing increased anxiety and depression mm-hmm. um, because of various, various stuff and various things that are going on in the world. So it's important we look after ourselves, yeah, physically and mentally. The way I do that is I have power breaks. I'm, I'm a real aviation geek, so I, I love getting on planes and traveling. It's why I live right by Farnborough Airfield. It's like I love jumping on the on planes and getting away and having, I call them power breaks. I go away for long weekends and mm-hmm. I'll work out. I am a workaholic in terms of the traditional sense I, because I love working. So we don't, I love growing companies. I love what I'm doing. So I don't see it as you know someone that doesn't enjoy their job and going in and having to work long hours yes. for, and, and not enjoy it. It's like I love creating and putting systems together. So yeah, I work a lot. I work long hours. Um, I go above and beyond in in terms of like if you're like a regular person would do real long long <laughs> hours. But I love I love it. So I go on power breaks. Um, and and when you're away on those breaks, yeah. do you? Do not work. No. <laughs> I love working, but I work, I build in, I, I go and explore, like go to cities and explore and mm-hmm. meet people and chat and communicate. And well, I'm always looking at like ways business systems are working. So if I go into a shop, I like chatting to the staff. I like, if I'm on an airline or an airport or something, I like talking to the staff. I, I, I enjoy seeing how businesses operate. And I also like hearing customers' experiences within places that I'm at. So I like, exp- that, that, that just like lights me up. It's really geeky, isn't it? But it's really, it, 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 well, it's really. I can actually, I can see it on your face. Yeah, actually, yeah. Even now, as you're saying yeah. it, and I, I don't think it's geeky. I think it that is. actually, what you like are people. Yeah, yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah, I do. I, so, do, so, I, do. I genuinely do actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I've got an annual pass to Disney Paris. Mm-hmm. I'm always there. So if I need to get up, I'll jump on a jet and, and rock up at Disney. Um, and spend some time there and it just lights me up. Um, what I like to do with my trips is include business training as well. So I love traveling around the US and I'll work in an event or I'll see if I can get booked in for a speaking gig mm-hmm. and, and, and tie it in. So it's almost like I can, I can travel and explore and have cash flow or learn. And I love tying things in with business events. So if I'm going out to a conference for three days, I'll stay out for a week and then go and explore. Yes. Um, I'm out to Asia next week because we've got an office in um, we've got an office in Manila. So I'm going by Shanghai, where I've never been before, and I'll be spending four days there. I'm going to go to a Disney Park in Shanghai. I've never been to it. I didn't even know there was one. They there. do have one there. Got one in Shanghai, one in Hong Kong, got one in uh, oh, Tokyo really? as well, and yeah, and two two in the US and one in Paris. And do you plan your 
So when you go and explore, you know, yeah. so obviously you know you're going to the Disney park, you know you're going to Shanghai, yeah. and you'll know your flights and things. Yeah. But are you fairly regimented yes. in what happens? <laughs> I am a bit of a planner. I'm a planner. But I think when you plan, it gives you freedom to be spontaneous. I had this conversation with a couple of business friends. I was out at their, their, their homeschooling and traveling the world at the moment, and they're in Cyprus for six months. And I, I, I went out, they invited me out there, and I had a long weekend last weekend. And... We worked on each other's business for like two of those days, but then we planned, it's like, right, we're going to go, we're going to hit the beach, we're going to go for a meal, and we're going to go and explore the old town, and we're going to do, and we did, so it's planning in bits like that, and it was Kate, one of my friends out there, she said, yeah, but all this planning, Rich, does, do you not like being spontaneous? I'm like, well, it allows you to be, because you, you can, you know that you're going to get the stuff done that you want to get done, and then you can just go, look, I've got all this downtime, I'll do whatever I want. So yeah, I plan in, like, when I'm going to work and do my, going to do, we've got, we've got to be meticulous planners as business, yes. business leaders. We've got to, you've, you've got to be a bit, um, you, you've got to own it. You've got to plan. It's really important. So yeah, I plan my, when I'm going to be doing work and what I'm going to be doing and what projects I'm going to be working on. And then I'll plan my downtime and go, right, I've got this time off. And within that time off, it'd be like, okay, I can do if I want to go to a restaurant, I'm going to book it so I can get in. Or if I want to go somewhere, I'm going to have to book. It will be planned. But if not, it'd be like, I just want to go and walk through the streets of Shanghai and explore. So I'll just roam. I love roaming and walking, exploring. No, and I, I have to. I I do actually fully get that because yeah. I, I have some friends who they want to do something, and I'll be going, "Well, we need to book." Yeah. And they'll be like, oh, no, no, and it's like, yeah. yeah, but you know what's going to happen is the day that you finally decide that you're ready to commit to going to this thing, we're not going to be able to get tickets. Yeah. Um, you know, so, so for me, there is that, actually, yeah. there are certain things you need to book in advance. Yeah. But then I, I used to go to Paris all the time. I absolutely love Paris. And, and I would literally, I would just go, and I would go by myself. I would go and meet friends who lived in France, and I would just meet them for lunch. I would go with friends. So yeah. I just did a whole range. And I would just, apart from whatever I planned with that, you know, person or people, just wander. Or I might just go and sit in a cafe and watch the world go by nice. and just really yeah. enjoy being there. Yeah. And I think it's an important trait to be able to love your own company as a, as a leader. You've got to be comfortable in your own skin, in your own company, in your, by yourself. <laughs> I travel a lot by myself. I, I, I love it. I, 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 and I connect with people when I'm out and about. But in, in, in terms of the, the rest of your question on, um, on, uh, how we look after mental well-being and health, etc., that's part of it. But I physically, work out um and plan plan those in i eat, i eat pretty clean and and that's pretty planned out as well but i plan my zags so it's like if i my zagging with my eat it's like right if i want to eat these desserts i'm going to plan it so i don't feel bad about it it's like oh i want that or i want this or i want to want to eat this this cheeseburger or something it's like okay, i'll plan that in so it's like yes we took my dad out for his 80th birthday um, to the Sky Gardens in London last week and uh, my brother and my nephew had a great time and it um, was planned it's like eh, we're going to have a, uh, four courses mm -hmm. you know it's like it's planned it's a zag um, it's planned in there the same when I travel so food and then I um, meditate it's, um, mm -hmm. I think it's really important uh, it's, just, it's something again I'd, I'd love it to be on the national curriculum uh, and meditation is really important and what and putting ourselves in the in the present now. Somebody to look up is um Andy Puddicum. Okay. He is English mm -hmm. but he's based out in the States and he is responsible for an app called Headspace. Oh and of he, course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he is talking to I think it's the US government, but something about meditation. I can't remember if it's being on the, the medical treatment or, or something which is quite yeah. out there. So you might be quite interested in... I'd love in. To, to read up on that, yeah. Yeah, because I saw um, something he posted the other day and I just thought that would... I think it might have been a, as a, the medical benefits that they were trying to prove that That's or huge. something along the way. There's a lot of science happening through meditation at the moment. And a, and a guy I follow is Joe Dispenza and his work and he's, he's connecting people meditating up to brain tracking software to be able to see oh, wow. our brain waves to be able to see what's happening between the you know the physical body and the mind and the, the spiritual realm and it's it's fascinating and what's happening i think is science is catching up in terms of yes. like we're, we're going to see this hockey stick curve where 
people are getting it and we're only getting it because we're being forced to get it because people are getting sick mentally. Mm -hmm. We're getting more depression, more anxiety. Kids are getting a, 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 a suffering from this at an earlier age as well. And, and there's more um, focus on these subjects, which is great. And we're seeing, so we're going to be, we're going to be seeing more, um, more science. Well, and as you say, the science behind it, because, you know, these things have been around for so long yeah. that for some people, they just couldn't, you know, it's, it's woo woo and it's all of this yeah. and, and, and it can't possibly be right. Um, because there's no science behind it. But the fact that yeah. science is now actually proving that yeah. there is something behind it, yeah. I think for those people makes it easier to say, okay, well, actually I will try it because I have to say, and I was really surprised at this, the number of people who I've interviewed and we're now, you're probably the 36th, um, 37th person that I've interviewed. Awesome. Yeah, and, and, and the number of people who have said that they meditate that I wouldn't have expected. Yeah. Um, and it, so it's becoming this really big awareness. So important. That, yeah, and it, it makes a huge difference. So important that you build it into your daily habits. And for me, I have, I have daily habits. I have a, you know, a morning ritual of what I do in the morning, which, you know, which involves what I eat, what I think about, my self-talk. I showed you your, my yes. whiteboard, my, my goals, my... My big vision, my big picture, I, I read them out loud, embed them into my DNA so that I, you know, I go through a gratitude piece and thankful and, and, you know, prayer, meditation, whatever floats your boat. But, you know, photo, uh, positive, positive thinking, call it what you like. But yeah. And again, it's learned stuff from training and courses, studying super successful people and what they do, studying people that are healthy, well and active and, and what they do. And I think. It, through modeling others through podcasts like this where people can say well what does he do and how does he do that and it's only through learning from others and having these conversations and then modeling parts of their behavior that, that, that ring true with you and it's tony robbins that talks about it a lot it's modeling um you know finding someone that's been there done it got the t-shirt and then modeling what they do mm -hmm. to, to which is a, it's a shortcut isn't it in, in, in into doing it but yeah Mental health, uh, meditation, what other things do I do to, to, to work on me? Uh, working out. I, I mean, I know lots of business owners. It's like it's the, the uh, same old excuse. I haven't got the time. It's like, you need to lose that excuse and make the time and make the time to do food prep, make the time to work out, make the time to do meditation. And it's part, it's got to be part of the, it's going to help you with results. The other thing I've not done for, I think, eight months now, I haven't drunk alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't had caffeine for a year and a half, so I've kind of got I've I've got really like really switched on with it very very recently, and really cool a cool side effect of of no alcohol. I have this like productivity window in the evening now. I, like in the evenings, I, I like to enjoy a glass of red wine or two. And and now I don't do that. I have this productivity window where I can do more work, and it's really fun. <laughs> and it's like great, I can do something else. I have like another section in my day. The other thing I did, actually, a friend of mine who runs an amazing event called GymCon, Nick Ruddock, and it's a, a it's an educational event for gymnastics and um, coaches of all different levels in different sports. But um, he's from a gymnastics coaching background and high performance, but. Brilliant event. Nick had a guy called Nick Littleton. I hope I've got his name right. At one of his events, he was a sleep coach, right? And he worked with Premier League football players. Was his kind of niche? Well, and he'd travel around with them to hotels and make sure that their bedding was all right from the bedding through to mm -hmm. all these sorts of things. Um, the pillows were right, the sleeping position, your circadian rhythm, understanding that jet lag, and understanding that caffeine amounts and. The food we eat, when we eat, um, when we get up in the morning, our sleep cycles. He did a brilliant presentation and then I read his book and then I had a chat with him on, through social media um, and I changed my uh, bedroom completely, completely like went through all his advice and you can probably tell by now, Deborah, I'm a bit all or nothing. It's like, <laughs> right, let's, I'm going to go for this. I'm going to go for but it. I think, but I think it's really important. Like if people say, oh, I've read, I read lots of books, but with business books, I think it's important. If you read a book, study it. Don't just read a hundred books. Great, you've digested a hundred books, but read it, study it, and implement it. So I read Nick's book, and it was great. And I wanted to. See, I read it because I, I wanted to see change mm -hmm. in my sleep. I wanted better quality sleep. I wanted to be able to day nap so that I felt really refreshed when I woke up. 
so yeah completely went through uh, with the bedroom it's like right redecorate repaint get this type of mattress in get uh, new carpets everything just to make this like a real tranquil zone no technology um etc and it, it's, it's helped and i'm really good on flights as well now like um, long long haul flights and being back get back in the zone sleep's really important it we, is we we have to have the right yeah. amount of sleep for our Selves. It's where we heal. It's where our bodies and our minds heal. And that's so, so strangely, uh, well, coincidentally, maybe one of my clients at the moment who I'm working on helping her to put together a chorus. Um, so I'm helping with the, the underlying technical pieces of it. But she's, it's a chorus on sleep. And she says oh, cool. exactly the same thing. It's, you know, she said, it's when your body is repairing itself or yeah. it needs that time. And, and she talks about, you know, sleep hygiene, the right quality yeah. of the room and the environment. The rituals and, and the, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Getting yourself, and a, a real big one, which would help lots of people hopefully listening is, because we're entrepreneurs and business leaders, is is our screens. It's the blue light that the screens omit. So what I have in the evenings, I will wear blue light glasses that have got a, a coating on them that blocks okay. the blue light. There's also a setting on your phone where you can put it into night mode. That helps, but it doesn't stop everything. So mm-hmm. there's light, there's glasses you can wear. I didn't know that. I know yeah. about the phone one because I have that set on mine. That. Yeah, omit, omits the blue light. Because there's been studies where people have, you know, there's just been like a little gap in the co- I've got blackout blinds in the bedroom now, like completely, it's completely pitch black. So this the studies, it will interrupt your sleep. It's, so you can really tweak, all, all these little tweaks that will, will will increase your productivity and increase your well-being and your happiness overall. But yeah, the blue light glasses are really good to, to block the light. That's the one hack. That, and then I have these ear pods for when I do flights where they they push light through the ear canal onto the brain. Right. So you put them on. You, you tell it what time zone you're going to go on to. I'm trying to think what it's called. Um, but it's a it's a sleep. What's it called? Um, jet. It's a jet lag thing. <laughs> a you, sleep jet lag adjuster yeah, you, thingy. Yeah, you put them in your ears like earphones, but it's it's got light. It's light that it's pushing through your ear canal into your brain. Oh, and wow. you tell it what time zone you're going to go, and it beeps at you when you've got. And you put it on for 15 minutes. And it beeps at you depending on what time zone to put them on. So it helps bring get rid of your jet lag feeling because it's tricking your brain to go, well, there's daylight um, okay. at a certain times. So it's bringing you through jet, jet lag quickly. So like little hacks yeah. like that. I love, love all that sort of stuff. <laughs> Well, because I always say the only time I'm a morning person is when I fly home to Canada, and for the first ah. few days I'll, I'll be up, you know, really early. That's really cheating. Protective. That's right. <laughs> and then, of course, the longer that I'm there, the more I start slipping into you know yeah. Canadian time. So, because because I tend to go to Western Canada, so it's eight hours behind. Yeah. Um, but yeah, otherwise the jet lag can just be a nightmare. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, if, you, if you're traveling, if you've got a friend of mine, Nick, who we've, we've just talked about, Nick, Nick Roderick, he travels a lot because he tutors for national federations all over the place. And yeah, he's, I mean, he's, he, he does pretty well with it and he does long drives as well from the airports mm-hmm. and stuff. So um, yeah, it's it's something if you're doing a lot of travel with business that you've got to put. We've got things like Zoom now. I don't know why we need well, to be, we don't always have to be traveling to places for business. No, exactly. And it's getting the mixture of, because face-to-face is still, for me, it, not replaceable by, no, no, you know, so even no. the energy that we've got yeah, talking is different yeah. to what we would have had if we'd been doing it over Zoom. Very true. Very but but true. there's still, there is so much more that you can do without needing that, mm. that travel um, mm. and using it as much as possible, I think, mm. is really important from all angles, not just the, the hardness on your body, but on, um, you know, money and cost. And I flew um, in, and not the last contract I was in, but one a few years ago, I went to, we were doing basically every week. So one week we would be in one location um, and then we would be back in the UK and then we would go to the next location. But we had to go to Argentina, um, which, yeah, which is absolutely cool. But we also had to go to Singapore and I couldn't manage to separate the two of them. So they had to be one week, you know, sort of back Mm. to back. And I just remember I flew to Argentina. We did our workshop and all of that. Flew back to the UK because I'd looked to see. I thought there must be a way to keep going round, but there isn't. <laughs> I'm sure, this earth is round. <laughs> it was exactly. I thought there must be, and it just wasn't. So I flew back to the UK. So I basically got back to the UK on Friday. On Saturday, I flew to Singapore. 
on Sunday, I arrived in Singapore, and I don't sleep very well on a plane. And I'd had, so what I normally do is I arrive somewhere, and if it's been an overnight, I go to sleep when I arrive. And that generally works for me. Yeah. Um, and then I get to the point, you know, I wake up around noon, and then I'm okay, I can stay awake till a key time. Mm. But my body had obviously decided that enough was enough, that I had not only been to Argentina, but the week or so before that I'd been to the States, and before that I'd been in Europe, and, and it was like, and I remember waking up and it was like, okay, I'm awake, but apparently I'm not moving. Um, and I just, my body was like a dead weight. It just was mm. not having anything, because yeah, yeah. I planned to go and do a little bit of exploring. And in the end, I thought, okay, well, you at least need to go downstairs. You can go and sit in the lobby of the hotel. I was like, no, okay, that's not happening. So I'll wait a bit longer. And then I was like, okay, I'll wait, and I'll at least go down and I'll eat. I'll have something. And I was like, no, that's not happening. So in the end, I remember calling down for room service, and I said to the girl who answered, I said, um, I've narrowed it down to these things, but I really don't know what I want. <laughs> <laughs> What would you recommend? It's proper jet lag. <laughs> but that's right. I was just completely, yeah. and and she said, she said, oh, so well, I would suggest that you have this because that's fairly traditional. I said, okay. She said, now, do you want that with broth or not? I said, I don't know. <laughs> she said, well, I would recommend that you do have it with broth, and I said, okay, thank you. <laughs> um, and then I was, and, and is that enough? Do I need anything else? She said, no, I think you should have some dessert. She said, if, if you have really some, I, off you. Is, uh, she said, if you have some ice cream, that would probably be just the right amount. So I was like, okay. <laughs> And I thought afterwards, my brain was obviously just in complete switch down. Yeah. Or shut down mode. She'd been asleep. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's it. And she was so sweet because, you know, just suddenly, I don't know what I want to eat, mm. but I need to eat something. <laughs> so I did manage to choose my own flavor of ice cream. Oh, good. <laughs> Je- sleep and jet lag. Yeah. They, lack of sleep deprivation is awful. I mean, it, it is. Been there, I've been there with events and it's, it plays tricks on you. You can like hallucinate and see. Oh, it's, it's awful. Yeah, and the, the feeling is just yeah horrible. For, you, feel, yeah. you feel so ill. I, I get it when if I get up early, <laughs> really early, and I used to have to get up really early for stunt for filming, and mm-hmm. and, and and also I did night shoots, and so you're forcing your body to stay up through the night, and it's horrible. You just don't feel settled, and you don't feel right. It's not. It, it's not good. The accident rates of night workers is proportionately higher. I mean, there's statistics on it. But because your body does just work. Yeah. And I, I am definitely, I'm not a morning person, and I'm definitely much more productive from about mid-morning until actually early evening. Yeah. So I will get, and I'll get a lot done in an afternoon. Yeah. But overnight is completely different. That's so, good, good to recognize, and it's a, it's a good, good thing for people listening because on on that, because we 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 we're told a lot with successful entrepreneurs and they only sleep for, for four hours and this person can get by in five hours and or you must be an, a morning person and, and it's interesting you, and you don't is the short answer mm-hmm. you, 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 you need to do what's right for your body um, because we're all di- our bodies are all different and um, this is why school's so terrible a teenager should not be getting up and going to school at nine o'clock in the morning because that, they need that they sleep. need to be sleep they're, they're, at that age they their rhythms, they need to be getting up later. That's why mm-hmm. teenagers sleep in on the weekend. It's because so it's, it's bonkers that they're forced to do that. But in terms of entrepreneurs, business owners, and leaders, I get up um, late compared to other people mm-hmm. that you know are, are told by society that they have to get up at this time. And that's when I do all my morning rituals and my reading and my exercise and stuff. I don't actually start my working day normally until about 10.30 or 11. Yes. Actual, uh, actual productivity. Same. But then I have a productivity pocket of probably 11, 12, well, yeah, three hour is my like, I am on fire. And that's like my, that's when I've got to do my creativity work and the stuff that is moving my company forwards. Mm-hmm. Um, then I have... Pockets after that where I, where I arrange meetings and, 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 and things like this after that time um, when I don't necessarily need full brain power and I'll, I'm, I'm putting out fires with you know, things, that, things that crop up and come, come through. But yeah, you, you've got to find your zone as uh, for you. It's what works for you, not what he does or she does or they do or you've seen it on a, this program or that program. You've got to listen to your body. Your mind work out what, what's right for you so you can work at those times. Yeah, there's external factors, kids, family, 
uh, yes. partners, etc. Completely get that, and that's called working as a team and all being on the same page. And that's why it's important to have family values and all be, you know, what are our, our goals for the family and the goals for the business, and we're all you know working as a team. But um, don't use, use those as excuses. As I've seen some people do, it's it's important to to, but to recognize, listen to your body. So that's that's what's important. Listen yeah. to your, listen to your to your body and stuff like that. And, and I agree completely. And I and I have definitely noticed a, a difference. So I'm very similar in terms of I wake. It's not that I wake up sort of you know mid morning. It's that that's when I start to kick in. Mm. And and the earlier bit is well doing whatever. This morning it was trying to convince the dog that sitting on me. Was not really <laughs> how I wanted to spend my day, though it appeared to be how he wanted to spend his morning. <laughs> um, so I have just noticed that we have been talking for absolutely ages, which is, well, really enjoyable. Um, but we probably should wrap up because it's just coming up for almost two hours. Oh, wow. I know. That's why I, you suddenly two. might have noticed the, the kind of, yeah, it oh, wow. says it's, um, yeah. Whoops. So. You're going to have to edit this one, aren't you? <laughs> I might do two episodes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, but it's been really interesting. Really enjoyed talking to Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Um, and is there any sort of final words you'd like to say to maybe somebody again? I know we've given some advice already to people starting out, but any final words to wrap up? Yeah, people starting out, yeah. Work out what, what your passion is. And from that, work out what your end goals are so that you've got stuff to work towards. But caveat to that, enjoy the process. Enjoy the now, the moment, what you're in, because these are the bits you'll be looking back at going, well, that one flew past and that was a good thing. But and it's really, it's easier said than done. And I'm guilty of it myself and I work on it daily through my meditations. But it's, it's enjoy the now and the moment that you're in. Enjoy the journey. Because ultimately, that's what life's about: is is, is the journey and the, the the experiences that we're having in the in the now. That is fantastic. Thank you so much, Richard. Thanks. And um, I will post you know details of the TED Talk and and all of that as well for people if they want to have a listen. Sure thing. Okay. Thanks, Deborah. Thank you. You've been listening to Deborah Levitt on Bridging Gaps, the business podcast.